Hello, I'm Stanley Prannan and welcome. Today I'd like to describe to you a little bit about my zone theory of Aikido. First of all, I'd like to describe what I hope to achieve through presenting the zone theory to the Aikido community. Number one, I think that the adoption of the principles that I'm proposing in this course will help you greatly accelerate your progress in Aikido. I hope also that you'll be able to avoid many years of wasted training. I'm someone who falls into that category. There, uh, for many, many years, I would attempt to use physical power if the technique that I was attempting to apply didn't work well. But that is a dead-end street. You may be big and strong, and you may be able to overpower almost everyone, but with the passage of time, your ability to overcome a strong uke or a strong opponent will greatly decrease. So that's uh, ultimately a dead end street. So one of the very, very important things that I hope you'll begin to understand the importance of is becoming soft and relaxed while applying techniques. And I stress this a great deal over and over again in the various lessons of the course and I try to explain the, the re rationale for this and why soft is actually much more powerful than using physical force. Now what does this zone theory of Aikido consist of? First of all, I th thought about this a great deal and I think that we can break down the general Aikido scenarios, the training scenarios that we have, into two basic categories. The first one is, in a situation where you are the initiator, in other words, you're able to trigger or stimulate uke to attack and then apply a technique. That's the first situation. The second situation is less desirable. That's where Uke has seized the initiative and attacks you first. And then you have to play catch up and respond to that. Now, going back to the first scenario, in the zone theory of Aikido, I teach you to use the initial contact with your partner to unbalance Uke. In other words, we're not just moving to the side or wherever you're going to apply your technique, we are letting that moment of contact produce a movement that off balances uke. This allows you to apply the technique very easily afterwards if your partner has lost the balance. Now we can do that by going to our partner's flank, this area here. What are some of the advantages of doing that? First of all, if your partner is located over here, he's going to have difficulty in seeing you. If you get far enough to the back, he may not be able to see you at all. That's one. Another point is that from this position, since you're located over here, it's awkward for Uke to counterattack you because first he's going to have to turn his body and face you. But if you are controlling Uke from the flank or in the rear area, you can prevent him from turning around. And another important characteristic of being in this position is that Uke becomes stuck because you've uh, bent him backwards like this, so his feet are not able to move. He needs to have both feet in position in order to avoid falling over. So it, altogether, if you can manage to get to this position and do your technique from this advantageous position of strength, then you're going to have a high success rate in the application of your techniques. Now, going back to, again to the second scenario, this is where Uke has initiated. There, your first job 
since you have a reduced amount of time to respond, is to get off the line of attack. Obviously, if you have a punch, you want to avoid the punch. If your partner is coming to grab, you want to uh, move in such a way that the partner cannot get hold of you and immobilize you through the, uh, the grab. So that's your first job. Then the second job is to take from Uke the initiative. You seize the initiative. Now, there's a number of ways of doing this, but the most common ones are by executing atemi and often accompanied by kiai, the combative shout. This can create a state of confusion in uke and allow you to turn the tables and gain the initiative. Then, if your partner is uh, confused or surprised, you'll be able to position yourself perhaps to the uh, blind spot of uke and continue just as you would in the first scenario. But you have that extra step there because you've allowed Uke to initiate and uh, catch you unawares. So that's, that's less desirable, but you can still salvage it. It just it, it presents a number of difficulties. I posted a number of videos which are actual excerpts from the Zone Theory of Aikido course and by viewing these videos you'll be able to understand the principles much better because you'll see them applied against an uke and their effect. I also talk about things to avoid and I think that if you go through these videos you'll get a clear idea of what I'm trying to emphasize and how it might benefit you in your training. Thanks for joining me today.